my title of uh, what I've been named of. Uh, when Mother had me, well, they, uh, they named me after my father, which was Floyd Eeyore. And so they named me Floyd Eeyore Jr. So Mother was laying there in bed that next morning in, uh, in the hospital, and, and she picked up the newspaper, and she saw in there where a guy by the name of Sonny Jim Fitzsimmons had won a great big horse race. She kept reading that deal about what he, this man ha had won, and she says, I'm going to call him Sonny Jim. And that's what I've been known all my life is Sonny Jim War. Well, my career has always been riding a horse. I was raised on a ranch down south, down east of Pueblo here. And my daddy was foreman on a ranch down there, and I had Shetland ponies to ride. So I rode Shetland ponies all my life when I was a little, little boy. And we moved to Pueblo here, and uh, I kept my horse and stuff like this, and I went to roping calves. So I just kept roping calves and kept roping calves. <laughs> first horse I really ever trained to go, go somewhere was a horse called Tender Boy. And he's the one that got me started in all this stuff. Daddy and mother went to Fort Smith, Arkansas to visit her brother won Christmas, and uh, while he was down there, he found this sorrel stud horse. Called me on the phone one night and told me what he'd done. And uh, he said he re really liked this horse. And I says, well, if you like him, I guess buy him, Daddy. And he had just come right straight from the racetrack. Didn't know nothing but go fast, straight. But he couldn't run quite fast enough, I guess. So they brought him home. And so the only thing I knew to do on him was rope on him. So I went to roping on him, and he really became a good one. I mean, really a good calf roping horse. Every now and then I'd bump into somebody that knew something about a horse and they'd say, you ought to go show this horse. So all we had down here behind was just some sheds and so I made me a box stall on the end of one of them and went to the store and bought me a bale of straw and a horse blanket and I was in the horse show business. Cracked out on him in 1960, and in 1961, I won the all-around saddle for the Rocky Mountain Quarter Horse Association. And he just—he was just a good horse. If I knew then what I know now, it'd be a lot different. So I had some old mares, so I bred some mares to him and raised some colts and went to 
showing them coats and winning on them coats and, and uh, winning all arounds on them and stuff like that. That's kind of what I'm known as. I'm known as an all around man. And I just kept showing them, and then people would say, well, would you ride my horse? And I, yeah, I'll ride your horse. Oh, I tell you what, what makes a good horse, that's a really a special question. Uh, I think a lot of it is the horse, most all of it is the horse. And and uh, hopefully the man on him can teach him enough to make him a better horse. It, it led me to win quite a few saddles, a lot of all arounds. And I guess uh, the big one was in 1979 when I won the Super Horse Trophy for the American Quarter Horse Association. Uh, that was the biggie. And I won that on a mare called Diamond Sparkle. And uh, I... Uh, I got her when she was a two-year-old and kept her till she was a five-year-old in my barn. Uh, the man that owned her was Dick Stewart, lived up here at, at, at Colorado Springs, and uh, he was showing her as a two-year-old, as a yearling, excuse me, and I was showing a yearling for a man in from Taos, New Mexico. And this yearling I was showing happened to be really a good one. And Dick could never beat me with this mare, Diamond Sparkle. He always stood right behind me. So, oh, about half a year or better, he come up to me one day and he says, how long are you gonna show this mare that you're showing? I said, well, till the end of the year because this man wants to win the year-end award with us. Uh, so he says, well, he says, when you get down this Mary, he says, would you, would you take Diamond Sparkle here? And I said, yes, I'll take her if I ain't got something else to, to, to haul. So when the year was over with, I called this man and told him what the deal was. I, and he said, well, he says, I'm not going to have nothing for next year. So I hung up the phone, pick up the, picked up the phone, called Dick Stewart, told him what the deal was. He says, Diamond Spark will be, will be in your barn tonight. So I kept her and showed her as a two-year-old that hauled her. Three-year-old, I got the pleasure points on her and the raining points on her. Made her an AQHA champion and kept her showing her. And in 1979, I took her to Oklahoma City and won the Super Horse on her. And I guess that, that's what they call the biggie. But it, just a little old mare that just really kind of wanted to try. And uh, whatever I taught her, asked her to do, she kind of just, she'd just do it, you know. As far as Telling me how long it takes for me to decide if I want to ride this horse or not, it don't take very long. You can tell, I can tell pretty quick if, if I want to ride him or not. People don't want to spend enough time with the horse to give the horse a chance to c come on. They're in too much a hurry. They want to get it done right there. It's just like when Dick Stewart sent Diamond Sparkle to me. He was, I mean, he was in no hurry. He said, take as long as you want, ride her just any way you want to. And he never told me to stop, go, or stay home or nothing. 
I done it like I wanted to do it. And consequently, she became a great mayor because I gave her enough time. In 1955, I joined the RCA, which is now the PRCA. I joined it in 1955 and rope calves. And this is when I decided that people wanted me to kind of ride their horses a little bit and stuff like this. Not very much, just a little bit. But in 1960, I turned in my card and I went to training horses full time. What year I retired from that, golly, I, I don't know. Well, yeah, a little after I won the Super Horse in 1979. I'd say 1981 or something like that then. Some of these saddles are saddles that, that I've won. In fact, right here is the first one that I ever won, right here. This saddle was one riding Tenderloin. And I won it for the Rocky Mountain Quarter Horse Association champion in 1961. Anyway, if you'll notice these uh, grand champion trophies here, the statues, this, these statues right here, there's three of them here, right in here, that's got the little saddles on. That, them trophies was awarded to you for the grand champion halter horse of that day. Well, I'm pretty proud of them grand champion trophies because if you look right above them, them performance trophies, all them performance trophies, was won on them halter horses. From that, what I moved into from that was, I, I thought, well, I gotta have something to do. So uh, I've always liked bits and spurs. So, I turned into a bit and spur collector. And me and my wife, we drive all over the country looking for bits and spurs. We go to these antique bit and spur shows and antique stores and look, look through these antique stores. And that's what we do now. This pair of spurs here, uh, was made by a man by the name of Adolf Byers. And when he was just a boy, 18 years old, in the Navy, my uncle was also in the Navy and they was on board the USS Kitty Hawk. My first Hall of Fame that I was inducted to was the Rocky Mountain Court Horse Association. Hall of Fame. And then after they got me in there, then they put my old stud horse in there, Tender Boy. So he's in the Rocky Mountain Quarter Horse Association Hall of Fame. So we got through there and then AQHA called me and they put me in the American Quarter Horse Association Hall of Fame. I think I can step on one and ride him for a little while, and I can tell you whether I want to ride him or not. I think it's just something that the good Lord blessed me with. And I never could do much of nothing else, but I could ride a horse. <laughs>